Hey guys, welcome back. I know it's been a minute, but I'm really excited about filming today's video. I've just been really busy and I'm excited to start making new videos, especially right now um, while hopefully everyone's not going out as much, everyone's limiting their contact within the community. I thought it'd be a perfect opportunity for me to hop on here, give you a few, well, oh my gosh, I say a few, I've got like 50 books laid out here. I just destroyed my shelves. Um, that'll be fun to clean up later, but I don't know. I just wanted to give you guys some recommendations I'm just gonna be talking about my favorite books ranging from like my all-time favorites to just books that I had really Unique reading experiences with or books that I really liked So if you have a specific genre that you're looking for recommendations for you can go ahead and check the description of this video I'll go ahead and give you a pretty fair warning though I'm not going to be talking about any science fiction or fantasy books. I've tried to read more of those this year um, So far it's just not going that well. I don't know if I'm just not a fan of the genre if I'm not picking the right books um, I'm not sure but yeah I don't feel like I'm the right person to be giving those recommendations so you won't see those there also I'm not gonna do a specific category for historical fiction I'm just adding two books that kind of loosely fit between historical fiction and literary fiction into my literary fiction grouping so yeah let's go ahead and get started okay we're bringing out the big guns early this is my all-time favorite book it's A Little Life by Hanya Yanagihara. I don't even know where to begin. Well, maybe I should begin by saying that these are all going to be literary fiction, which is my favorite genre. Okay, so this is a big, big, big book. Uh, it's got like right over 700 pages. It is, like I said, literary fiction. So this book follows four friends over the span of just about their entire lives. It is about friendship, love, trauma, abuse, just a lot of really heavy topics. If you read this and make it through the entire book, you will cry. I don't care who you are. This is so touching. I gave it an immediate five stars. I actually read this over the course of a few years, which sounds crazy with me saying this is my favorite book of all time, but I would read maybe 10, 15 pages at a time and then have to put it down because it was just so heavy. But I think in me saying that it took a few years to read, but I kept coming back to it, that really speaks to how these characters draw you in. And I feel like I know every single one of them. Like when I first started reading this book, I was having dreams about these characters. Like that is how much they meant to me and how real they felt. So yeah, A Little Life by Hanya Yanagihara is the first recommend. Next, I'm gonna talk about another one of my favorite authors. It is Celeste Ng. So my recommendations from her are Little Fires Everywhere and Everything I Never Told You. If you have a Hulu account, I also suggest watching the Little Fires Everywhere miniseries. It's airing every Wednesday right now and it is so good. My parents have not read the book, but I've been watching with them. They're really enjoying it. I'm loving it. It's a great adaptation. This is a pretty complex storyline, but what I'll say, it is pretty much a family drama. Um, multiple families are involved. Motherhood is probably the biggest theme in this book. I feel like I just made it sound really boring, but it's not boring. It is so good. And this was my favorite book that I read in 2019. I absolutely adore it. And then I also read Everything I Never Told You last year. This has one of the best opening sentences that I've ever read. So it's not a spoiler. This is the very first sentence. Chapter one, Lydia is dead, but they don't know this yet. Actually, I lied. That was the first two sentences. So this is another family drama. As you just heard, middle daughter has been found dead. So the book kind of follows events from the past. So either leading up to her death and then the parents past. So years in the past and then how this family moves on without their daughter. Both of these are five star reads from me. Highly, highly, highly recommend. This next one is kind of a wild card, but I didn't want to film this video without mentioning it. It's um, This Is Where I Leave You by Jonathan Tropper. This cover is one of my pet peeves. I'm not a huge fan of like media adaptations being the book covers and this one has such a cute cover that's not this. I'm actually just going to put the other cover that I like better up here so you can enjoy that. So this is another family drama but when I say this is one of the funniest books I've ever read, I mean it. <laughs> just in case you didn't believe me, this book is really funny. Um, I shouldn't have said that before explaining what it's about because it's about um, the patriarch of this sprawling family who has passed away and the family has to reconvene for the first time in 
years, maybe ever for some of the extended family. And they have to come together under one roof and sit Shiva for a whole week. This is so different than things I usually read. It had just been on my TBR for so long. And since I've had more time on my hands lately, I figured I'd go ahead and pick it up and I just couldn't put it down. Um, yeah, I don't really have anything else to say about it other than it was pretty funny. The last three I'm gonna talk about for this genre are kind of the books I was mentioning that almost fall into that historical fiction genre but I'm still just gonna loop them in here, so. Two of them are by Taylor Jenkins Reid. So we have The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo and Daisy Jones and The Six. These were both massively, massively hyped within the past few years. Daisy Jones is her most recent release. It won the Goodreads Choice for Best Historical Fiction last year, and if I'm not mistaken, this book won for the same category a few years back. If not, it was, it was nominated and did well. The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo just takes a ton of turns. I would say go into this one knowing as little as possible, so I'm not even gonna give you a little blurb of what it's about. But one thing I will say about it is that Evelyn Hugo is just one of my all-time favorite characters. She's just such a legend. Daisy Jones and the Six, really all I want to say about it is that it is told through a series why am I trying to show you? It's told through a series of interviews. So it's fiction, but it's told as if this band, The Six, is being interviewed for, I guess a magazine? I don't even remember. Maybe a book they're, I, no, I guess it's this book that they're writing about them. That's totally what it is. Okay, so they're being interviewed for this book that's like a tell-all. What I really like about this book is that each of the characters are getting to tell their own story. So as the story's being told, you're getting all these different perspectives and it's really fun because you don't really know whose truth is real or if any of them are telling the complete truth, if they're trying their best, if they're hiding anything. Um, there are twists throughout the book and I just couldn't put it down. I really enjoyed this one earlier this year. Last but not least for this genre, Where the Crawdads Sing by Delia Owens. If you've not heard of this, well, I would say you'd be living under a rock. That sounds rude, but I feel like this book is everywhere. I loved it. My mom read it first, recommended it to me, then we made my dad read it. We all loved it, and we have very wide reading tastes. The main character's name here is Kaya Clark. This book spans her entire life. She raises herself pretty much on marshland. This one does have a shifting timeline, so we are going linearly, linearly. <laughs> throughout the course of Kaya's life, but then every now and then these chapters are inserted that are in the present day and a crime has been committed and these detectives are trying to solve the crime. That is also going chronologically. <laughs> Do you see what I'm saying here? Basically, it seems like two different stories and the two different stories come together at the end again. Obviously, I'm gonna stop saying I recommend it because that's what this whole video is. I recommend all of these books, obviously. Next, I'm gonna talk about a genre I'm pretty new to. These are all romance books. I think they're pretty much all contemporary romance. They're all pretty fun reads. I don't read a lot of this genre, but I do have a couple to recommend that I've read lately, like within the past month. Um, first of all, I wanna start with The Hating Game by Sally Thorne. It is about two coworkers who don't get along and they are up for the same promotion. It's a really fun read. I really enjoyed it. Read it really quickly and I just think the cover is so cute. And also speaking of cute covers, my favorite cover of 2019, Red, White, and Royal Blue. I guess you could call this a political romance, which I never thought I would be into. But yeah, again, one of my favorite books that I've read recently. And I've got to give Casey McQuiston credit here. I put that away without mentioning her. But this writing was just so good. I wasn't going into this one for the craft, you know, but... I was really impressed with her writing. The Rosie Project by Graham Simpson. This is a pretty quirky love story about a man who has this entire algorithm for who the kind of person he wants his future wife to be. And then he meets this woman who kind of does not fit the mold at all. And they just become really good friends throughout the book. And I just thought it was so cute and worth recommending. This also has a sequel called The Rosy Effect. And I'm gonna check it out from my library's audio collection pretty soon. Really excited to get to it. Lastly, talking about what I'm currently reading, a library book that I checked out before all the self-isolation went into place. 
um, Josh and Hazel's Guide to Not Dating by Christina Lauren. Christina Lauren is a pair of authors. It's really good so far. I'm on page 78, so I'm really enjoying it and figured it'd be worth recommending in this little section. I also quickly want to recommend three of my favorite nonfiction books. Know My Name by Chanel Miller. This is the memoir of the woman who was sexually assaulted by Brock Turner, you know, the Stanford swimmer. The case was all over the news for a good bit of time and this is her story. Now Chanel was an English major, she is a writer, she is an illustrator, she is so talented and I, oh I'm getting emotional. I read this book and I absolutely loved it. It moved me to tears. As soon as I finished it I also bought the audiobook. Like I straight up purchased it because I wanted to hear Chanel tell her story in her own words, even though I just read the book. It is the most powerful thing I've ever read. Um, she is such a talented writer and for her to be able to take her past and turn it into her own story, it is just so good. I really quickly also want to explain this cover, which is stunning. We have emerald green and gold, then the white letters. So about this cover, Chanel wrote a note on the jacket. The gold veins on the cover represent the Japanese art of kintsugi. I'm not sure, probably butchering that, but that means the golden repair, in which pieces of broken pottery are mended with powdered gold and lacquer rather than treating the breaks as blemishes to conceal. The technique shows us that although an object cannot be returned to its original state, fragments can be made whole again. That is so touching. That is so beautiful. And that's how this entire book is written. So again, highly recommend. So I want to end the nonfiction genre books on a lighter note. Why Not Me by Mindy Kaling and Is Everyone Hanging Out Without Me or Is Everybody Hanging Out Without Me by Mindy Kaling. I listened to that one around Christmas time this past year. Loved it. I still think Why Not Me is maybe still my favorite from her, but um, Mindy Kaling's just hilarious. And I've said it before, I'll say it again. If she wrote a thousand memoirs or autobiographies or books or shows or whatever, like I would consume every bit of it. I just love her so much. So I've got one more category to get through before we get into the biggest genre that I'm such a huge fan of, which you can probably guess. It's mysteries and thrillers. But before that, I wanna talk about horror. I don't read a lot of horror, horror. I have trouble with that word. What I do read, I love. So I think that's a sign I should be reading more. First, I'm going to talk about this fun, quirky book that I love. It's called Horror Store by Grady Hendrix. So I've talked about this book in a few of my other videos just because I feel like it comes up a lot. It is quirky. It is weird. It is a horror story that takes place in this Ikea knockoff like fictional store. These co-workers have to stay overnight because they think someone's been breaking in at night to vandalize the store and things go down overnight while they're there. This is written like an Ikea manual. It's just so weird. The pages are white and then all of the writing is blue. It's a square book, which it just looks like such a cute little coffee table magazine. But then if you get closer, you see that there are scary things on it. So that's my first recommend. Next is one I didn't think I was going to enjoy. It had been on my TBR forever, but I finally got to it, I think in January. And that's The Ruins by Scott Smith. What I really liked about this book is that the horror... Nope, that's a spoiler. I'm not going to give you any spoilers. So here's something that's not a spoiler that I think will still convey what I'm feeling about this book to you. There's a lot of man versus nature in this book and I think it's really easy in horror stories to get caught up in things that are supernatural. I'm not saying nothing supernatural happens in this book because it may, it may not. But the things that scared me the most in this book were things that were happening where I thought, oh shoot, that could really happen. That is terrifying. So. That's all I'm gonna really say about that. No, it's not. Let me tell you a little bit what it's about. <laughs> that was a complete 180. Okay, so it's these friends who go to Mexico on vacation and then their trip goes wrong. Okay, never mind. I'm not gonna tell you what it's about. So I just know I recommend it. Lastly, I hate this cover. Like, I hate this cover. It by Stephen King. I don't know why I couldn't just hold out and get the one that has like the 
clown teeth on it. I don't think that would be any better, but um, I really thought I was doing something with these tabs, by the way. I don't know why I went so hard on the tabs. Um, this is the longest book I've ever read. I read it in October this past year. I read it over the course of like October, November, I think. I didn't give it five stars just because it's not a perfect book. I had a lot of trouble, especially at the end. If you read it, you know what I'm talking about. A little disturbing. Not in a horror way, but in an I'm uncomfortable way. I will say I think about this book maybe four times a day, like every day. Something comes up in my everyday life four times a day that makes me think of this book. What am I saying? I just, it's stuck with me. I don't know. I think about the movies a lot too. It's about these friends as children and also as adults and then the timeline shifts back and forth and they're fighting this evil force that lives in their town again both as children and as adults and it's just freaky like i really liked it so it's my favorite king i've read so far so it has been recommended to you now okay buckle up we're doing mysteries and thrillers which is my other favorite genre i know i said literary fiction is my favorite genre what i meant by that is i feel like i give those books five stars more than I'd give these thrillers five stars but I'd be lying if I didn't say some of these were like my actual favorite books ever so I'll let you know if any of those come up okay one is coming up right now it's called Night Film by Marisha Pessel Marisha Marissa Peschel this is another one where if you take me up on this recommendation I need you to go into this knowing just about nothing just know that I really liked it if you trust me uh, it does have mixed media, so there's a mystery at the center of the story, obviously, or it wouldn't be in this category. So, as you're reading along, it contains mixed media. So you feel like you are uncovering clues with these characters, you feel like you're seeing what they're seeing, you're experiencing the same things, and it was such an immersive experience. I feel like this one also almost goes into that horror genre, but it's still right there, it's just a fast-paced, thriller i almost want to call it a psychological thriller too it kind of is so yeah please check this one out if you like this genre it's one of my absolute favorites next is lock every door by riley sager i love riley sager actually i'm gonna mess up my pile i'm gonna go ahead and recommend final girls by riley sager as well i much prefer this one and i also have the last time i lied back here which you can't see i've not gotten to that one yet but out of these two, I much preferred Lock Every Door. It's not a series or anything. It's just, these are all standalones. Um, so Lock Every Door is about this young woman who has recently broken up with her boyfriend, which has left her with no place to live. And then she's also just lost her job. So in the midst of all of that, this opportunity arises for her to apartment sit at this incredibly ritzy and fancy, not hotel, apartment building that she's always been interested in so the it seems like a situation that is too good to be true what i really liked about this book is you go the whole time not knowing if something's going on that is supernatural or if something's going on that is not supernatural i don't know a word for that but anyway, this is such an easy book to read. I read this in one day. I couldn't put it down. And yeah, I loved it. Final Girls by Riley Sager. This one plays off the Final Girls movie trope. So like in a horror movie, how usually there's one girl standing. She's called a final girl. Um, this book follows the story of a few different final girls from real life. Well, in this fictional world, real life horrors. And now someone is picking off the different final girls so that there's possibly one final girl left standing. Um, it was really creative. I was not a fan when I first finished this. I think I gave it three stars, but it has stuck with me and I'd kind of like to revisit it in the future. I think that maybe I didn't give it enough credit because it's a pretty solid read. Woo! Let's go ahead and knock out three of my very favorites right in a row. The Woman in the Window by A.J. Finn. This is going to be a movie later this year with Amy Adams, so go ahead and read it now. This does have a trope that I kind of got tired of last year, but then this one was just done so well that I couldn't ignore how good it was. Um, and that is a woman witnesses something, but she is an unreliable witness because of either a mil mental illness or like drinking problem drug problem whatever like you know that trope that like the girl on the train and like just a lot of other books have that is the center of this book but there are a few different elements hmm not gonna spoil anything but to me this one is set apart from others in the genre 
because it was different. That's all I'm gonna say about it. Really liked this. Next is The Silent Patient by Alex M Michaelides. McLeides. I know I'm not saying that correctly. So this story is being told in two different ways, like from two different perspectives. So this book starts with a woman committing a horrific crime and then she goes silent. So part of the book is told from her psychotherapist and kind of his research on her and then his experiences with her and that's how part of the story is told. And then the other part of the story is told from this woman whose name is Alicia her journal, so her own thoughts leading up to the crime that is committed. So the timeline is fun here. This twist at the end is huge. It was one of my favorites of last year. Another one of my favorites from last year, No Exit by Taylor Adams. This is another one, like I was saying how Lock Every Door was just so easy to read. This one was so easy to read. It's another one I read it all, not just in one day, but in one sitting. Um, it is about this girl who was traveling home for a really important reason. It is snowing outside. She has to pull over at a rest area and she can't get back into her car because there's a blizzard. She can't get back on the roads. So she is stuck at this rest area with these random other people. And then in the parking lot, she notices something terrifying about one of the cars in the parking lot and she's stuck. So this is such a good isolated setting thriller, which besides like a psychological thriller, isolated settings are just my absolute favorite. They are so riveting. And it's just good old fashioned good versus evil. Like sometimes when you're reading a thriller and it's a psychological thriller and you're like, oh, is, is that what it's supposed to mean? Is this, is this a good guy? That, like this is just straight up, like there are good guys, there are bad guys, so really enjoyed it highly recommend it while i was talking about the silent patient i should have been talking about shutter island as well i have said this about every single one of these books but i promise this time like this really is just about my favorite thriller of all time um if you've seen the movie i don't know if i would recommend the book as highly because once you know the twist i'm not sure if it's as good so i've read this book a few times the first time i read it it blew my mind i read it before the movie came out it blew my mind. And then I really enjoyed my reread, maybe more than I enjoyed the first read because I went back looking for clues being like, I don't know, I'm not gonna give anything away, but I did enjoy my reread. It's about a mental institution and these FBI agents who come in to look for a missing person who has gone missing from the institution. And they're on this island, so it's another isolated setting. I was just mentioning how much I love those. And this one is delightful. No, I'm, I shouldn't describe this as delightful. It's good. <laughs> we are in the home stretch now. The Still House Lake series by Rachel Kane. So I've already read the first two in this series. I'm currently on page 120 of Wolf Hunter River, which is the third book. And I don't own Bitter Falls yet, which is book four, but these are so good. So Still House Lakes, the first book, is about this woman who didn't know she was married to a serial killer until one day it's uncovered, it all blows up in her face. He goes to jail and then she is on the run with her kids. She's acquitted of being an accomplice, but there are all of these internet trolls who just are convinced that she is somehow involved. Like you've seen those Reddit threads of conspiracy theories and I am guilty of also going down the rabbit hole on conspiracy theories about different true crime stories. So this was really eye-opening to see that like people, even if you don't think your stories or your theories are affecting these people, like they are. So it shows how much this woman suffers from people thinking that she was somehow involved with her husband's killings. So these trolls not only abuse her online, but she worries for the safety of her children. They have to go live in this isolated setting again. So, uh, cause she gets paranoid that these people are coming after her. And then in this little isolated town where she moves her family, people begin showing up dead the same way that her husband had murdered people, but he is in jail. So she's concerned for obvious reasons. And then the next books in the series just continue to follow her journey. Okay, let's talk about Gillian Flynn. So these are examples of books that are not my all time favorite, but I'm not gonna do this video without recommending them because so many people cherish them. And I had really unique reading experiences with them and I think about them all the time. So the first one, Sharp Objects, which was also adapted into a mini series on Hulu, I think 
last year or a few years ago and it's a woman returning to her hometown to report on a series of murders that are taking place and then dark places also by gillian flynn which is about a girl whose entire family was murdered when she was young and then her brother it was thought that her brother committed the crimes and now all these years later she's not so sure so she's not she wants to know what happened but she's kind of torn between wanting to know if it really was her brother who committed the crimes or if something else was going on so um yeah recommend both of those i did enjoy sharp objects much more than dark places but yeah they were both they were both good stories last but not least one of my favorite authors karen slaughter who wrote pretty girls and the good daughter these are gory and gruesome i need to hold them up i have a high tolerance for stuff that's gross and and scary these are horrifying so pretty girls has so many twists that i feel like anything i mention about any of the plot is a spoiler so um if your interest is piqued look into it i recommend it the good daughter was my favorite between the two uh, it's more of a courtroom drama, more law stuff involved, but again, it, it is so graphic. Um, they're also pretty long books, like these are, these are big guys. <laughs> okay, I need to stop filming. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you found something from this video that you might enjoy reading, whether it's something you already own, something you might have access to as an ebook or online. Thank you so much for watching this video. I'm looking forward to making more in the very near future. And thank you so much for watching. Bye.